saying hello to everyone and just to let you know that everyone is muted now so if at any time you would like to put a question and I'll tell everyone again later please type it into the chat down the bottom there and Matt and I will be telling each other as we go along or I'll be telling Matt if there are any questions as we go along so first of all I want to say Welcome to everybody for coming. Uh, my name is Debbie Strouch, and I'm from the Victorian section of the National Council of Jewish Women of Australia. And I think we have people from New South Wales here as well. And I'd love to know if there's anyone from any of the other states, and if so, pop it into the chat at the bottom, and uh, that'd be great for me to know. And I'd like to thank you all for joining us for this wonderful Brain Food event. Brain Foods are small talks, that we run through National Council, where we invite the audience to interact with the speaker, both during and if time permits, after the event. After finishing a business degree many years ago, Matt worked in a great variety of settings, including vineyards, ski resorts, and teaching English. For the last 18 years, Matt has been beverage manager at Melbourne's The Big Group, which is Australia's largest privately owned catering and events company. Currently, Matt sets beverage lists, trials, cocktails, trains staff, and runs logistics The Big Group. He is an expert shaker and stirrer. Tonight, Matt is going to show us how to make five famous and fabulous cocktails. The recipes will be sent to everyone after the event. And thank you to everyone who has donated for tonight. So please turn off your microphones if they're not already off. Turn on your cameras and join Matt while he mixes up some wonderful drinks. Type questions into the chat box as we go along and I will make sure that Matt knows the questions are there to answer. So without further ado, I introduce you to Matt Broadbent. Hello, can you hear me all? Can you hear me, Debbie? Perfect. Yep, ready right. to go? Hello, everyone. Lovely. Uh, thanks for having me. It's giving me something to do. There's not a hell, as a, as a, a member of hospitality, there's not a hell of a lot going on at the moment, although we're getting ready. To, to reopen up at the big group and you know things are looking really promising for about four weeks time and there's there's loads of work backed up so um, it's all starting to feel like the beginning of the end or maybe the end of the end or the middle of the end or anyway things are looking promising um, so thanks for having me uh, I can't see you I'm just going to assume that there's swarms of you out there and you're all massively engaged and hanging off every word I say and laughing at anything mildly amusing um, Please ask lots of questions via Debbie. Uh, tell me to slow down. Tell me to repeat something because I get carried away sometimes. But please jump in with any questions um, you'd like. Now, maybe while we're, while we're talking, if you're going to juice some lemons and limes and you haven't already, maybe get your juicer out and juice a lemon and a lime while I'm still talking. Um, now, as Debbie mentioned, I've been at the big group for, for 18 or so years um, looking after the beverages. And very much when I... When I began, cocktails were very much an afterthought. It was all about everything else, and cocktails were were very much an afterthought. And and you know the quality was um well it was what it was. And it's probably the last really the last ten years when um you know the quality of ingredients has improved with with the internet. You know techniques have been swapped from all around the globe. Recipes have been swapped from all around the globe, and and the quality of of cocktails that we're all making has dramatically improved largely because uh the the guests out there the consumers have been demanding better quality products because they can see and hear and taste everything from all over the world now so um and it, and now cocktails have become a, a very very uh much a, a front of mind thing for uh, for all our guests um and at the big group my role amongst sort of running logistics and, and running the, the, you know, the nuts and bolts of the beverage side of things, the ordering and the, and the stock management. Um, one of the main roles I have is, is, the, is setting the cocktail lists, 
uh, batching cocktails, serving cocktails. And, and I guess, you know, from a catering perspective, the, the two things that are most important for, for, for me and, and for the big group, we want to get an absolutely fabulous cocktail into our guests. But equally, we want it to be quick. You know, when you've got a wedding for three, 400 people, um, no one's got time to be sitting around uh, watching a barman take 10 minutes to make one cocktail. So we've, we've got lots of little workarounds um, to, to speed up and, and lots of little tricks and tips to speed up the way we make cocktails that don't affect the quality uh, at all. And so tonight, I'll just show you a few. I'm going to make a few cocktails, show you a few recipes, show a few of the tips that we uh, and, and tricks that we use. Um, but as far as cocktails goes, go. I just want to say there's no secrets. You know, it's, it, you know, the, there really are no secrets. It's just like cooking. You get a good recipe, you get good ingredients, and you have a go, and you see how, and you see what comes out, and you adjust it for your taste. Um, but there are no real secrets. But there are a few little little tips and tricks, and, I, and I'll show you a few tonight that I use. And I thought. What I might start off with is an espresso martini. And, you know, all of our guests seem to leave it until, you know, if they're having a wedding, they'll have the dinner, and then they'll introduce the espresso martinis at about 10 o'clock, which I reckon is madness. You know, I reckon you'd be far better off getting an espresso martini into your guests as soon as they walk in the door, you know, get the place jumping instead of having it at 10, 11 at night and not sleeping until 5 in the morning. But so I'm going to start with one now which is probably good because you're going to be sitting there listening to me blather on for about 45 minutes and you might need a little caffeine uh, hit uh, to, to, keep you, uh, to keep you engaged. So I'll start with an espresso martini. And how I'm going to do it is I'm going to use a Nutribullet. So I'm hopefully you've all got one of, I mean, hopefully everyone's got something like a Nutribullet or a, one of those blenders or, or whatnot in their home. And it makes absolutely fantastic espresso martini. So you can shake them. Uh, this is kind of like a cheat's way. And, you know, it's, it's something that we do at the big group. You know, to tell you the truth, sometimes I'm making espresso martinis and I might be making, or our staff might be making 200 of them. I get a commercial stick blender about this big and a big jug and I pour in my pre-batched espresso martini and then pour out 10 at a time and it works absolutely brilliantly. The quality is fantastic because it's, it's our recipe and it's our ingredients. Um, and this is just sort of like a, the, the, this little neutral bullet is kind of like a mini workaround that. And I guess one of the things that we do for, for our events is pre-batch cocktails. And it's happening more and more wherever you go out to a bar. And you'll see bar, bar staff, instead of taking the time to individually measure out 30 mils of this and 15 mils of that and squeeze of that, they will have pre-batched um, largely most of the components of that cocktail into a bottle uh, to save time. And the, the quality doesn't suffer at all. In fact, the quality is better because if you ever see a bar staff, bar staff, a cocktail maker who's under pressure, they start just free pouring and squeezing and, and the quality of your cocktails can suffer. So a great tip for, for anyone who, if you're having people over for a, a dinner party or whatever, pre-batch your cocktail, put it in the fridge, put it in the freezer. You can make an, a, a, a litre of espresso martini, completely done, and you can stick it in the fridge for, for months. Uh, stick it in the freezer. Uh, cocktails freeze really well. Uh, and they don't take long to, to defrost because the alcohol doesn't freeze, but the rest of the components, the juice and the syrups and whatever, that freezes, but the alcohol doesn't. So when you pull it out, it doesn't take long to defrost. So pre-batching cocktails is becoming very common in, it's always been common in, in hospitality, in catering businesses. It's coming very common in bars. And if you're a home, home um, uh, aficionado of cocktails, pre-batch them, put them in the fridge uh, or the freezer and bring them out and just save yourself all the stress. So, first one, espresso martini. So, I'm going to just do a, a bog standard uh, recipe, which is equal parts vodka, equal parts coffee, a liqueur. I've just got the bog standard Kahlua uh, and equal parts coffee. Now, the thing about coffee is I've just got the coffee from this little Bioletti thing, which uh, it makes good coffee, but it doesn't make amazing coffee. If you've got an espresso machine in your home, that makes great coffee, and you'll know that a hit from a fresh espresso, espresso has got that real kind of bitter, bitter chocolate richness to it that you just don't get from other coffees. So I've got a little trick. Use some bitters. So chocolate bitters. Up here I've got some, I don't know if you can see it, some, some black walnut bitters. And it's a fantastic way of just trying to replicate that, uh, that sort of intense bitter chocolate hit that you, that you get from an espresso coffee when you're only using one of these or maybe you've got filter coffee or... Or, or some other coffee. So 
I'm going to, I should have done this beforehand, but I'm just going to put, open this up and put a couple of drops of this wall, black walnut bitters. Mm. Okay, I might have to call my trusty assistant. Uh, Lucia, can you quickly open that up for me sometime? Maybe get a knife and open that up. Oh, no, I've got it. It's all good. So, into my uh, mixer, I'm going to just go the standard standard measure of, for an espresso martini. So I've got 30 mils of vodka. Here we go. 30 mils of Kahlua. Now, there's, Kahlua is a pretty standard coffee liqueur. It's on the sweet side. You can get better quality uh, coffee liqueurs, but this one, this one works pretty well as long as you do the work around with the bitters. Now I've got my 30 mils of coffee. And now, like I said, because this is quite sweet, I'm going to put a couple of shakes of my black walnut bitters in there, and that's going to sort of replicate that espresso bit of chocolate vibe. And nuts go really well with coffee as well. Now, the next step is some ice. Now, you don't want to put too much ice in there, maybe just a couple of cubes, because remember, an ice is just pure water, so you're diluting your, your, um, your espresso martini, which is what you do anyway when you shake it. You're, you're chilling it and diluting it. But if you put too much ice in there, it's just going to uh, sort of make it watery. So just a couple of cubes on with the top. And, put in my thing. and then you don't want to blitz it forever, just until you he you'll start hearing the um, ice cube break down. As soon as you, you stop hearing those ice cubes break down, you're done. Done. This is the laziest way to make espresso martinis, but it's fantastic. And it's great if you've got, say, four or five or six people over it. You can just pour it all in here, put in your ice and do it all at once and pour them out. It's fantastic. So I've got my espresso coupe. And in it goes. And as you can see, using the Nutribullet, it's like the Incredible Hulk has been shaking your uh, espresso martini. And you get that beautiful foam. So look, it's probably half foam, but over the next uh, minute or so, that'll settle down into a beautiful cream, creamer on top. And the good thing about using this is that with a couple of ice cubes in there, it just super chills it immediately because you've blitzed up that ice uh, and it lasts. The, the, the sort of foamy creamer head on that will last for 15, 20 minutes. It'll stay cold for 15 or 20 minutes because you've blitzed it up with that ice. And there you've got the lazy, lazy cheats way of doing super quick but beautiful espresso martinis. Now, I'm just gonna have a little taste of that. I just spat that out in the sink because I'll be doing that throughout the night because otherwise I get a bit loose if I've been drinking four or five cocktails. So beautiful and you can really taste the, the bitters that just balances out the sweetness of the uh, Kahlua and it's fantastic. So I highly recommend using the Nutribullet. Now I'm going to show you a little trick for the garnish. So I call them bling beans. So I've got coffee beans in here and I've got this product here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's basically a baking item and it's called gold. It's gold coloring powder. You get it from a baking store and I'll open it up and you can see it's just got sort of gold powder in there. And I am just gonna get a tiny little, tiny little dab on the end of the teaspoon. I'm gonna put it in my coffee beans. Put the lid on, okay. And then what you are left with is these beautiful gold dusted bling beans they're fantastic and they they make a really cool garnish and then i'm just going to drop three of them on there and that is my nutribullet espresso martini with my bling beans can you see them just floating there in the top there they just give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a lift and like i said that glass is beautifully chilled and that crema is going to stay on there for 15, 20 minutes. Now, 
do this. I'm going to leave that one up there. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to my second cocktail, which is a margarita. And I'm going to make a, a, a standard margarita, and then I'm going to um, show you a, a spicy margarita. So I'm going to give that a quick, a quick rinse. Now, if you all haven't, if you all haven't um, juiced up your lime, then now's a good time to do it because you just cannot use anything other than fresh lime juice or lemon juice in cocktails. Lime cordial just doesn't cut it. Nothing beats, um, nothing beats using fresh lime and lemon. It's essential. I'm going to bring my margarita ingredients to the front. So I am going to do start off with 30 mils uh, of tequila and this is one of those cocktails where just spend a little extra on getting a good um, Blanco tequila. Um, I think we all drank pretty crappy te tequila when we were growing up. Tequila's come a long way. Well, it probably always was there, the good quality tequila, but it was never imported into, into Australia. But the quality of tequila is fantastic. Spend a few extra dollars on getting a decent one. Now, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put 45 mils of tequila in here just to make it, to give it a little bit of warmth, but some people just do 30. And now triple sec, Contro, uh, orange liqueur, I'm just gonna go 15 mils. Now lime juice, which I squeezed up earlier, um, 30 mils. Fresh lime juice. And then I've got agave nectar. Now I don't know if you've um, seen this before, excuse my teeth. Just gonna take the top off. Um, I don't know if you've ever used or seen this before. It's a, it's, a, it's a sweet syrup that comes from the tequila plant and it's fantastic. It just gives you, you can get it in, in most, you know, decent bottle shops or dans. Um, health food shops have it as well. Um, and it just, it's got a beautiful sort of rich sweetness uh, to it. Plain sugar syrup is good. I find this just a little bit better and it's, it's made from the tequila, tequila plant. If you're using just straight sugar syrup, just 15 mils, if you're using this, just 10 mils because it's it's sweeter and more viscous than a, than a standard sugar syrup. So, Matt, a sugar yeah. syrup, a simple syrup, just a one-to-one -one ratio of sugar to water? Yes. Now, I'm going to stop and just do that quickly. Like with, with, a, um, with a sugar syrup, it is just, like you said, a one-to-one one -one ratio. And don't be, uh, don't be intimidated about making a quick sugar syrup you only need to make a little bit when you're making cocktails um, so for example i've just got sugar whatever your measuring cup is and then the same amount with water in that goes and then you're just putting it onto the stove for you know a minute or two until it dissolves the sugar and clear So I'll leave that on there and I'll show it to you. It won't take long. As soon as that sugar has dissolved, uh, it'll warm up a little bit and uh, absorb the, the sugar. The water will absorb the sugar. It'll go clear. And as soon as that's gone clear, it's done. And you can put that in the fridge. Uh, leave it for, uh, it'll last a couple of weeks or more in the fridge. Um, and then the beauty of it is you can infuse your own sugar syrups. One of the, I make about three of them work. I get kaffir lime leaves and make a kaffir lime syrup. You just leave the kaffir limes in there for a couple of days. Uh, I make a thyme one with fresh thyme, and then I make a mint one as well. And you can get really lots of really good quality syrups out in the market. Um, I use them as well, but there's nothing like making one your own, free of any extra ingredients, just just pure herb and sugar and water it really makes a us, sorry matt can you show us a close-up of the agave syrup label so that people can see what it is yeah yeah i mean uh, this is called a heredura uh agave okay. i guess the, so they're mexican yeah yeah made in mexico from the tequila plant i guess the beauty of uh, the agave nectar is it's shelf stable so you buy, a, uh, buy a, a little bottle of this and it just sits on your shelf. You don't even need to put it in the fridge. Sit on your shelf, it's shelf stable, it's fine. And you can use that 
anytime you need a, a sweet element to your to your cocktail, you don't need to make your own sugar syrup. You can just add a little bit of agave nectar. Maple syrup works well as uh, too. That's also quite viscous and rich, so you need a little bit less than just a plain sugar syrup. But okay. And I you always, can get the agave syrup at Oasis and, and food places like that as well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Dan Murphy's has got it, but health food places have got it. Um, yeah, well worth buying a bottle and just keeping on hand. What else would you use it for? Well, that's a good question. Um, Thank you. you. Put, put it on your rice bubbles, I suppose. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll just drink a lot of cocktails. It's not alcoholic, but, yeah, it, you can use it in any cocktail as a sweetening agent. And um, one question about the coffee beans that were on the espresso martini. Obviously, yep. uh, they're not just for decoration, they're edible? No, they are purely for decoration. You can't eat them? You probably could, but they wouldn't taste very nice. It's a, it's a, it's a raw coffee bean, so, uh, there you, go. so you, okay. might, you might lose a filling and uh, you might, they, they probably wouldn't taste so good. But, yeah, purely for decoration. They look pretty cool. Okay, they do look very cool. And so you can see now my sugar syrup, I don't know if you can see that, but it's gone clear. Um, and you can just pour that into a, any sort of vessel, any sort of jar. So if you're infusing herbs into that, yep. um, how much would you put in, say, for a cup of water? Uh, let's call it 250 grams of water and 250 grams of sugar. Yep. How many kefir lime leaves or thyme sprigs? or? I just stuff the pot full of whatever you're infusing it with. The more you, the more you put in there, the uh, the quicker and the stronger the uh, the the um, the syrup will be. Yeah. Uh, and then I usually leave them in there for a while, while the syrup's warm, um, until it cools down to room temperature, and then I throw the whole thing in the fridge for a day or two, let it keep infusing, and then strain it, um, and then and then you can um, leave it in your fridge for a couple of weeks, and it'll be good. So I've got my um, basic uh, tequila recipe, which is my um, which is my uh, 45 mils of tequila, my 15 mils of triple sec or orange liqueur, 30 mils of fresh lime juice, and I've got 10 mils of my agave. Now that is your margarita right there and there. So all you need to do is fill your glass to the top with ice which is really important, fill it all the way to the top um, because you want to dilute your cocktail. This is pretty potent. It's a, it's a, it's warm, so it's not cold. You want your cocktail to be chilled, but probably more importantly, you want it to be diluted because this is pretty potent and you need to dilute it a little bit with some water. Um, and shaking a cocktail has the same effect. It chills the cocktail uh, and it dilutes it uh, a little. Pouring over ice has the same effect. You know, you can just... Let that sit there for 30 seconds and you have the same effect as if you'd shaken it. Um, it'll chill it, it'll dilute it. And there you've got a, just a, a classic margarita. Lovely. I hope you're all making that and enjoying margaritas. I love margaritas and, yeah, just good quality tequila. You can't go wrong. Now, here's the fun bit. I'm going to turn that into a spicy margarita. So I am going to tip that into my uh, Nutribullet um, jug. Just hold the ice back because I don't want any ice in there at the moment. So now I've got my margarita back in there. And the beauty about using the Nutribullet is you can add uh, fresh herbs and fresh um, vegetable flavours, whatever you like. And you can blitz it up right into that cocktail. So you can you can get a bit of cucumber and you can infuse your gin bottle. That's good. You can get jalapenos and you can put the jalapenos in your tequila and then you can infuse your tequila like that. That works. But I don't reckon anything works as well as getting fresh uh, cucumber, fresh uh, coriander and jalapenos and actually blitzing it up with your cocktail. Um, so what I do is at work is I, I blitz up my um, jalapenos, cucumber and coriander actually and then I add that to my mix of cocktail and I let that sit for a little bit and then I strain it and get out any um, solids that are there. But the beauty of a Nutribullet is it just blitzes everything up so fine, you don't even have to strain it. So what I've got, I've got my margarita mix here and I'm just gonna add my 
uh, component. So I've got a little jar of jalapenos and I'm going to add just a couple, add as many as you like. I'm going to put maybe just two in there, three, one for luck. I'm going to put in a little, um, a little sprig or two of coriander. It gives it a nice sort of herbal warmth. And then I'm going to put in some cucumber. So I've got about a, a decent chunk. Now, same thing with the ice cube, you know, that's cucumbers are pretty watery kind of vegetable. So you put in a huge chunk of cucumber, you're going to, you're going to, um, you're going to dilute your cocktail too much. You don't want that. But a little bit of cucumber is great because it's sort of the, the sort of fresh coolness of a, a cucumber cuts back on the, or balances out the, the spice of the um, jalapenos and the warmth of the uh, coriander. So, Matt, I happen to know I happen to know at least one person watching tonight that I'm fairly close to who hates coriander. Is there a different herb that you would suggest, or um, leave it out? I would suggest try it with it in there. Ooh. And if you don't like it, if you're allergic to it, obviously don't put it in there. But if you if you um, try it in there and see mm -hmm. how you go. And if you don't like that, then leave it out. So I think, as I was saying to you before, I had this on our, our list at, at the big group for a couple of years and I called it the jalapeno, coriander and cucumber margarita. Nobody ordered yeah. it. I think it scared no. them off. The moment I changed it to a spicy margarita, everyone orders it and everyone loves it. And no one ever sort of goes, oh, is that coriander in there? Because it's sort of just a hint of it. Okay. And it's just a hint of that warming coriander um, okay. along with the cucumber and the, and the jalapenos. So try it. But by all means, if you don't like coriander, right. leave it out. It just gives a nice bit of herbal sort of warmth. So okay. I don't know what you'd substitute for that. Um, Mint, basil. Yeah, looking for that sort of warmth. That's, that's yeah. sort of the warmth of the coriander sort of matches well with the spice of the jalapenos. If anybody, but, um, if anybody has a suggestion, pop it into the chat and we can... If you don't like it... Rose, someone suggested rosemary. Viv suggested rosemary. Rosemary would work well in a, in a margarita anyway, so uh, pop that in there. Um, so there you you've go. got that in your... Um, I've got that in my... Oh, maybe. I've got that in my um, my Nutribullet. Hey, by the way, ask questions. The more questions, the merrier. Um, I've got that in my Nutribullet, and I'm just going to give it a zap up. And, and the beauty of using this is... You can you can sort of add a, add a flavour to anything. So gin, if you like gin and tonic, and you like the cucumber element in, a, say, a Hendrix gin, you can get your gin and your tonic as well, uh, and just a, a, a sliver of cucumber, blitz it up, pour it over rice. Fantastic! It's a great way of introducing um, herbal vegetable elements into your cocktails. And these those sort of neutral bullet blenders, they blitz it so fine, you don't even have to strain it. So here we go. All right, zapped up, blitzed up, beautiful. So I'm going to get some fresh ice. Now, before I do that, I'm just going to do a quick uh, rim of salt on my glass because I love a bit of uh, salt on the margarita. So you can use anything, a piece of lime, a piece of lemon, a piece of uh, cucumber, um, and just wet the rim of your glass. You can just use water. You can just dip it in a saucer with a little bit of water. Wet the rim of your glass into your salt. And then you come out with this beautiful salt crust on your glass. And uh, you can buy smoked salt now. You can buy black salt. You can buy pink Himalayan salt. Experiment with your salt. Smoky salt is fantastic. I love it. So I'm going to get some, fill my glass with ice again. And again, all the way to the top, fill your glass with ice. And then I'm going to get my mix and just pour that over the top. And as you can see, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, vibrant green. And I absolutely love that. I know some, some people like to try and, you know, strain it super fine and get rid of any of that, those little green pieces in there. And, and just sort of purify it. But I, I just love 
I love the vibrant green. I love the little green bits that I can see in there. It just tells me that it's fresh and zingy and, and it's fantastic. And then a little garnish, you can put a little lime, lime in there or a little uh, cucumber sphere in there, whatever you like. And um, yeah, cheers. Like I said, I just, I just love the color on it. You can all see how beautiful and, and vibrant and fresh and green that is. Yum. And I think when you're making up, um, when you're making this up, just make it to taste. If you, if you, if there's, if you can't taste the cucumber, add a little bit more. If you can't taste the coriander, add a little bit more. But the, what I love about it is you actually get to taste, you can taste them all. You can taste that warmth of the coriander. You get the fresh coolness of the cucumber and you get the spice of the jalapeno and it's beautiful. Yeah. I've, got a, I've got a few people that are looking forward to cocktail nights after lockdown, Matt. Right. <laughs> yeah. And this is one that we, we pre-batch at work and it's fantastic. You know, you can make up a litre bottle of it, put it in your freezer. It'll last for months. And then when you're... No, 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 no. Well, yeah. But if you've got a dinner party coming up or you've got a cocktail party, make up a couple, two, three litre bottles, put them in your freezer or fridge, pull them out. Pour them over ice and you're done. And it's a it's a fantastic quick quick workaround. Great idea. Great idea. Okay, now I'm going to move on to um, a basic sour recipe. So, which you know, I'm going to start with a whiskey sour. So, your basic sour is is a three to one ratio. And I can't tell you how long I I spent in my early days trialing cocktails, adding a bit more lemon, adding a bit less lemon, adding a bit more sugar, trying to get the balance right. And then eventually, you know, someone said, well, you just use your, your three, two, one ratio. And it just now it just saves me so much time. I know that when I'm trialing a cocktail, as long as I'm keeping roughly to those sort of ratios, particularly the two to one, which I'll, I'll tell you about, I'm going to be in the ballpark most of the time. So the three, two, one refers to three parts alcohol, two parts tart, one part sweet. So you, your alcohol is whatever it is. It could be um, whiskey or amaretto, anything. Your, your tart is your lemon juice or your lime juice or your yuzu juice, any sort of tart citrus fruit. And then your sweet is your sugar syrup or your agave or your um, maple syrup or whatever you're using as a, as a sweet. But if you keep that ratio, the three, two, one, pretty much all your cocktails are going to work out. Um, and, and the crucial bit is the two to one, the, the two parts tart and the one part sweet. That'll give you a nice balance uh, and that that sort of two to one ratio the, the, the tart to sweet it's kind of like the the, the bartender's equivalent of, of salt and butter you know like a, a chef adds salt and adds butter to their you know to their dish to to lift the flavors to just give it a real hit a real zing um, and the, that's exactly what that sort of two one mix of of sour and sweet does it just gives your cocktail a real lift so that and that's the crucial ratio, that two to one of sour to sweet. So two parts, either lemon or lime, and then one part of the sweet sugar syrup. So your basic sour of three, two, one, I'm going to do a whiskey sour, um, three parts whiskey, two parts lemon, one part sugar syrup. So I'm going to get my little jar. And now for whiskey, so it, let's assume we're doing, say, using a 30 mil it doesn't really matter what you use. You can use an egg cup, uh, but I'm just going to use a 30 mil thing here. So I'm going to call 30 mils one part. So it'll be 45 mils, 30 mils, 15 mils for that three, two, one. So my 45 mils of whiskey. Now, smoky whiskies, actually, I can't do them because they find them a bit full on, but in a whiskey sour, they are beautiful. It just adds a real smoky element. So for my 45 mils of whiskey, I'm going to do 30 mils of a, of a standard blended Johnny Walker whiskey, and then I'm going to do 15 mils of this um, Ardbeg smoky whiskey, which is fantastic. Then I've got my lemon juice, which I squeezed earlier. I'm going to do um, 30 mils of that. And then I've got my sugar syrup, which I made up before. And I'll do 15 mils of that. 
Now that that is your basic sour um, recipe. Three, two, one. Now I'm going to just get my. Now some people shake them over ice uh, and get a foam, which I'll get into a bit later. But there's nothing wrong with just getting that and pouring it over ice. So I'm going to do that now. Well, Matt, um, you said it could be any alcohol. I know there's a drink in Peru called the Pisco Sour. Uh, yeah. Is that a similar three, two, one as well? Exactly. Yeah. So same sort of thing. It's it's your spirit with your uh, with your tart, which is usually, you know lemon or usually lime, and then your your sweet, which is your sugar. So okay. three, two, one gives you a pretty standard kind of sour. If you like your your rest that your um, cocktails a little stronger, you can go four, two, one or five, two, one. The, the crucial bit is the two to one ratio of the tart to the sweet, but you can definitely up your alcohol if you um, if you like it a bit stronger. Okay, and uh, someone called Danielle Rogers has just asked for the recipe for the sugar syrup again. She may have missed the first part, so could you just tell everyone how to make a simple sugar syrup, please? Yeah, it is. Yeah, sure. Hello, Dancy. How are you? Uh, lovely to sit to hear you. See, I can't see or hear you, but it's lovely to know that you're there. Um, your basic sugar syrup is just 50-50 sugar water. So uh, any sort of sugar, white sugar, brown sugar is cool. It, it gives it a nice darker, richer flavour, but any sort of sugar, one part sugar, one part water into a saucepan. And then on, on a low heat, just simmer it for a, a minute or so until the, the water absorbs the, the sugar and it goes, uh, goes clear. And, um, and then you can just leave that in your fridge. Or as I was saying earlier, you can infuse it with anything. Just chuck some herbs in there, leave it in there for a couple of days in the fridge, strain it, and then keep that in your fridge and use it. <clears throat> so I've got my glass full of ice. And again, fill it to the top with ice all the way. And I'm just going to pour my mix over there. And you've got a whiskey sour. So you can shake a cocktail over ice and strain it. You can just pour it over ice and swirl it with your finger. In 30 seconds, you're going to end up with the same result. It's going to be chilled and diluted and lovely. We've had one person asking whether you use egg whites in a whiskey sour. Right, I'm just gonna to come to that next bit. So there's one way of serving a sour, which is just over ice. And then there's another way, which is to shake it and, and serve it in say, a, you know, some sort of sexy little, uh, you know, um, cocktail glass and where you get that beautiful foam. So I'm gonna do that in a second. Now I'm just gonna do one quick little trick. So I've got a piece of fresh ginger and a fantastic way to add another flavor to your cocktail is to rub it around the rim of your, of your drink. So if you try and put ginger in a cocktail, you know, into your whiskey sour, maybe some ginger syrup, whatever, it, the more things you add into your cocktail, the more muddle, the more chance you've got of muddling your cocktail and it not working. But a fantastic way is if you rub this on the rim, just rub that fresh ginger on the rim. It's never going to interfere with the flavours that you've got in your drink, but as soon as you bring that to your mouth, you just get that absolutely beautiful fresh ginger into your, into your nose. And then as you drink, you get that beautiful ginger smell coming into your nostrils at the same time. And it's a fantastic way of adding another flavour into your cocktail without muddling or or muddying the other flavours you've got in your glass. A piece of orange, a piece of lime, fresh ginger, even fresh herb rubbed around the top. It's a fantastic way of, of getting another taste or another smell into your, into your cocktail. Now, as a second way of doing a, a sour, you can, you can shake it over ice using one of three things. Now, you can use egg white. You can use a thing called aquafaba, which is the juice out of a chickpea tin. So you buy a tin of chickpeas from the supermarket and the liquid that comes with that is called aquafaba. It's, I think it's water that's just had it been infused with chickpea and it's called aquafaba. Or there's a new product on the market called Wonder Foam, which is pretty cool and it's a, a bark extract. And it's a good thing, it's a great thing to have this in your, uh, in your cocktail cabinet because it's, it's shelf stable to last forever. And all those three things, the egg white, the, the chickpea water and the Wonder Foam do the same thing. They, as you shake them in your cocktail, it gives you a nice foamy, frothy head and it softens your cocktail. Um, and then you can serve it 
then you serve it in a, an ice sexy glass without ice and then you can float some beautiful sort of garnish on top so as an example i'm going to put this uh into my cocktail shaker i'm going to put that whiskey sour back into the cocktail shaker with the ice and then I'm going to get I'm going to use aquafaba. If you're using egg white, use the egg white. If you're using um, uh, a little bit of chickpea juice, use that. I'm going to use my Wonder Foam, which just requires three drops. Time for good luck. And then on with my top now. I mean, cocktail shakers are great. A jar works just as well with the lid. Shake, shake, shake and then just hold it to, to stop the ice coming out. Just works just as well. But I've got my um, shaker, so I'm gonna give that a go. And you can already see it's just starting to foam up and froth up in the uh, in my shaker. Now I get my strainer. And I give that a uh, pour into my glass. So Matt, if people were doing that with egg whites or aquafaba, how much would they need for that quantity for a single margarita? I usually use about 15 mils of egg white uh, and probably roughly about the same, maybe a little so bit less, 10 mils of the egg mils uh, would be just over a teaspoon. Yeah. Uh, two, three, sorry, three teaspoons. Three teaspoons. Yeah. Yeah. And fresh, uh, Fresh egg, egg whites out of the egg are pretty hard to work with. There's a good product in the supermarket. You can get it in the Tetra packets, 600 mils of um, egg white. Uh, it's a good product because it's a little bit easier to, to work with and pour as opposed to the one crack from a fresh egg. It's hard to sort of get what the quantity you need. Um, chickpea, chickpea water, aquafaba works really well. And then you don't have to worry about anyone who might have an egg white uh, allergy. And, and this, good, for, uh, good for vegans too. Correct. Yeah, yeah, and then this uh, Wonder Foam is good. It's a, it's from a it's from a bark extract, so that's also all vegany. And so then you end up with this um, nice little cocktail the that you can serve in a in a sexy kind of glass like that. And the beauty of that that foam on top is then you can get a you can get all sorts of garnishes and just sort of float them on the top. So I've got a um, cool little dehydrated. Uh, Getting drunk just listening to it all. Yeah. <laughs> I've got these cool little dehydrated limes. You can you can get some beautiful dehydrated ruby grapefruits and limes and lemons, and then you can just sit it on top of your cocktail. I can't really, oh, you can probably just see that there if I tip it down a bit. And it will just sit on top of there as a beautiful garnish. You can drop a little, some dried rosebuds or, or whatever you like, and it will sit there and float in your cocktail. Yeah. So that's the whiskey sour done shaken. Can float. Yum. Yum. So it tastes yum is that someone there with you, Matt? Pardon? Is that someone saying yum with you? Who was he? Uh, no, I think that's someone online there. Someone Hopefully online. They're... Someone's got their microphone off. Who have we got here? That's saying and I'm yum. just going to give it a, another rub of, of ginger around the rim. And uh, this is one that we do at work, and I call it a smoky ginger whiskey sour. And it's uh, it almost feels healthy. You know, you've got that. It's like a rum toddy vibe, whiskey toddy, when you're feeling sick with some ginger and I know, I know it's not good for you, but it feels like it could be just about. Yeah, I'm so tasty. And so I have my glass, I found that in an op shop and I'm obsessed with old glassware. You can find the most beautiful op, uh, glassware in op shops. They've usually got a whole rack of glassware and you can get some fantastic old glasses, vintage glassware. Okay, so I'm coming up to uh, my last one, which is a Negroni now. Let's face it, there's no secrets to the Negroni. Uh, it's three, three spirits, equal parts, you can't go wrong. Uh, I read an article on, online the other day and it was saying it was uh, a bar, a bar talking about the secret to a good Negroni and I wanted to shout out to them. There are no secrets, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty well impossible to, to mark up. Um, 
There's a few tips you can use to, to zhuzh it up a bit, but there's no secret to a Negroni. It's three spirits. Get a bottle of gin. Get a bottle of Campari. Get a bottle of decent red vermouth. Tip them all into a, a tub. Swirl it around. Pour it back into your bottles. And you've got three bottles of Negroni. Pre-mixed, shelf-stable. Sit them on your shelf. They can stay there forever. Um, so, you know, I'm a pretty lazy uh, cocktail maker. So when my partner asks me to make her a cocktail, I think she thinks I'm going to get elaborate and do this, but I get a bit lazy and I just reach for the pre, pre-mixed pre uh, bottle of Negroni that I've got on the shelf. Can't go wrong. So I'm going to make a Negroni and I'm just going to give you a couple of little, uh, a little of my tips to, to zhuzh it up. Um, so I'll give that a quick rinse. And I'm just going to get my 30 mils of each and pour them into my uh, glass. So I've got 30 mils of Campari, 30 mils of gin. Now, as far as the gin goes, any good London dry gin is going to work fine. Um, I've got a, a Bombay London dry gin. Beef eater works really well. Um, but where you can where you can really up the up the game in your Negroni is your uh, is your your sweet red vermouth. So I've got a Dolan brand, which is pretty good, uh, and it's not expensive. But there is one other brand out there. Um, it's called Antica Formula, uh, A N T I C A, and then Formula. Uh, it comes in a fancy one liter bottle, and if I was going to probably invest in one quality bottle of booze for my for my spirits cabinet i'd go to the bottle of the antica formula it is just such a beautiful rich italian um sweet vermouth uh it makes it sort of smells and tastes like that beautiful rich christmasy kind of pudding and it's fantastic and it's one way of really upping the quality of your of your negroni so your classic negroni people bartenders will get this drop in some ice swirl it around and then strain it into a glass I actually just prefer just about all of my cocktails served in a glass full of ice. I love the way it chills it, it dilutes it, and I love the way that you can sit on it for ages. If you get one of those Negronis that's been strained into a little glass, you know, it feels like two or three sips and it's gone. But I like to sit on a Negroni and, and just let it dilute and just enjoy it. So I'm going to fill up my glass to the top with ice. And I'm going to pour that over there. And like I said, there are no secrets to the Negroni. That is a great Negroni. I see some questions up there. What have we got, Debbie? We have somebody asking for types of gin. Uh, any Aussie brands you'd recommend? Uh, like yeah. um, Four Pillars. Four Pillars is great. Uh, Archie Rose. Archie Rose, great. They all make beautiful, um, beautiful gins. Um, Manly Spirit Co. make a lovely, lovely gin. It's it's one of those things where you West can Wind. Campari's Campari. A decent gin okay. is, is 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 good, but it's the sweet vermouth that really gives it the lift. But having said that, the better the gin you put in there, the better your Negroni. But okay. pretty much anything from a beef eater up is going to be is going to be lovely. Um, loads and loads and loads of Australian producers. If, there are so many Australian gin producers. They're all they all began making whiskey but whiskey takes seven years to, to age in barrels before you release them so they've all made gin as well to to get them through to that seven year period which is just starting now where they where they can start selling their whiskey so there's a lots and lots of gin producers so this is um this is our standard negroni and i i guess i've got a few tweaks to make a negroni where i, where I find it even better so the first one obviously is is spending a bit of money on, on getting a really good quality of the mousse. So Antica formula is my choice. The second thing I like to do is put a squeeze of fresh orange juice in there. So it's probably, you know, the purists are probably going to be rolling around, rolling their eyes at this. But for, I guess for, for a lot of people, it's a pretty potent drink. And that the bitter orange of a Campari, it can be just a little bit too much for some people. I find just a squeeze of fresh orange juice. I've got a half an orange here and I'm squeezing that in. And I'll get my uh, trusty chopstick out. I'll give that a little bit of a swirl around. And I find that the, the squeeze of the fresh orange, it just cuts back the, the bitter orange in the Campari just a little bit. 
and just adds a beautiful kind of fresh, fresh fruit zing to the cocktail. Uh, question we've got is about where, where to buy most of these spirits. Do you think Dan Murphy's is just the good option for anything or have you got specialised alcohol liquor stores that you prefer to go to? As much as I, I, I don't want to be, you know, uh, encouraging people to go to a massive chain of, um, you know, uh, liquor outlets, it's pretty hard to beat Dan Murphy's. You know, their their prices are great and they've got a, a really huge range. Um, yeah, I mean, you'd struggle to not find what you want or, or an equivalent product in Dan's. Um, Including that vermouth that you were saying? The Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've, def they've definitely got there. Uh, any good quality, really, you'd need to go to a top shelf. Um, Dan's have got it because they've got a, a big range, but you, yeah. you wouldn't find it in a smaller bottle shop uh, unless it was one of those uh, boutique um, boutique sort of up, up, upper quality bottle shops. But I guess just jump online. It's, and it's, it really is well worth searching out. Um, like I said, if there's one quality bottle of booze I'd be, I'd be splashing out on in my, in my liquor cabinet, it'd be a bottle of that Antica Formula uh, Vermouth. So my version, my, my little tweak on the Negroni is just a little squeeze of, of fresh orange juice, which I, which I love. And then I've got another variation that I do, and I call it the long, slow Negroni. And, you know, the Negroni is a, it's a pretty potent, uh, it's a pretty potent drink. It's basically three spirits all mixed up. So it can get pretty full on. So I like to sort of make a version that adds a couple of flavours but also lengthens it a little bit and makes it just a, a bit more of a sipper that you can sit on. So what I do is I add cider, unsweetened passion fruit pulp and then give it a garnish of mint. So here I've got a beautiful um, Harcourt cider. I've got a pear cider. They make an apple cider as well. This one's alcoholic. You can use that. They make non-alcoholic ones which work just as well. And I'm going to put 30 mils of that in there. Again, the purists would be uh, rolling their eyes at this, but uh, purists would be no fun to drink with, would they? And then I've got some unsweetened passion fruit pulp here. I'm just going to put 10 mils of that. Make sure you use unsweetened passion fruit pulp. You can get the little bottles of sweetened stuff from the supermarket, but they're, they're just uh, they're a bit cloying and a bit sweet and, and not, not as good. So a fresh passion fruit's better better or see if you can search out some unsweetened passion fruit pulp. And then again, I get my trusty chopstick, chopstick and give that a little swizzle. And then I've got some mint sprigs here. And then I'm gonna pop that down the side of my glass. And there, I don't know if you can see that there, but uh, it looks fantastic. You've got the beautiful bright red, ready orange color of the Negroni. I can see, you probably can't see it, but I've got some little passion fruit um, seeds floating around in there and then I've got a nice sprig of mint on the side there and then to taste mm. it's fantastic it's uh it's it's sort of you've still got the core of that Negroni cocktail in there that you can taste but you can also taste a little bit of the the, the cider uh, the passion fruit you get the smell of the mint they all just add on to it but the, the last little sort of lingering taste you have in your mouth is that classic three parts of the Negroni. Um, I just love it. It's beautiful. And again, it's one you can sit on, serve it over ice and just sit on it for ages. It's lovely. Yum. Fantastic. Now, one last trick before we go. We're probably running out of time. A really cool way to up your game with your cocktails is get a little spritz this is like a little perfume bottle. You can buy a little spritz bottle. There's a great shop called Only Bitters in Smith Street. They sell, uh, they sell the little spritzers and you can buy any sort of bitters, like an orange bitters. Put it in there. And just as you're finishing your cocktail, I don't know if you're gonna see this, I'll give you a few spritzers. Yeah, you can see those, like a little spritz of perfume. A little spritz of your, uh, of whatever, or your bitters or whatever it is over your cocktail. And then as soon as you bring it to your, your mouth, you just get this beautiful smell. Of, uh, of whatever it is you've spritzed over it. So I just put on some citrum, citrus blossom. But basically you get a, an atomizer 
And then any bitters that you see in a bottle shop, an orange bitters, a cherry bitters, a, a rhubarb bitters, I think citrus bitters work the best for a lot of drinks. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of drinks will get you to, to shave off a piece of orange rind and give it a twist and release some of the oils. This is the cheats way of doing it. Just get that spritz out. Can you see that? You give it a spritz. And it just stays there on the rim of your glass and on your garnish and it will just keep that beautiful, a beautiful spritz smell the whole cocktail long. Mm. Fantastic. I think we're just about done. I can probably start start swallowing now and drinking. Um, any questions out there? Well, I think we've probably covered most of them as they came up. I've been uh, reading them out to you as they came up. Um, any, oh, we have one more suggestion for a light alcoholic cocktail. Yes, yes. Um, I've got a few, I've got a few non great non-alcoholic cocktails. Oh my God, Vivian. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know who she is, but yeah. I I, I've never really gone down the light alcohol version because I kind of figure you're in or you're out, you know, like uh, go the zero option. There's plenty of good zero uh, zero alcohol options. And I'll tell, I'll tell you one of the best ones I've got. Has anyone ever seen those little bottles of, it's called San Bitter, S-A-N Bitter. And it's a little San Pellegrino product. You can get it at um, Peter Monty's in North Fitzroy. Jump online, you'll find them. It's a little bottle and it's basically a non-alcoholic um, Aperol kind of, Aperol soda kind of taste. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Now, what I do is I get uh, one of those little bottles of um, San Bitter, 30 mils of passion fruit pulp and a sprig of mint over ice. And it's beautiful. You'd swear it's an Aperol spritz, um, but it's a non-alcoholic. So that's probably one of my go-to mocktails. That's a nice idea. I mean, you can always reduce the amount of alcohol that you're adding or a Bellini or a Mimosa or one of those. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. More, more tonic. If it's a gin-based cocktail, a great way of um, tonic goes really well with gin. So any gin-based cocktail, add a decent splash of tonic to, to lengthen it and make it a lower alcohol version. Um, but, yeah, like you said, sometimes we do 18th birthday parties and, and often the family, the mother and dad will say, we want cocktails. We don't want everyone getting too drunk. Can you just, can you make, can you dilute them? Can you make them weaker? And we'll just cut the alcohol in half. Um, obviously, we'll charge half, you know. We're not allowed to do to, to people off, but we'll, we'll just cut the alcohol down. We'll keep all the mixing elements um, and just lower that alcohol down. So that's a good way of, um, of making low alcohol, low alcohol drinks. That's a good idea. And you can pre-mix any of these drinks and there won't be any problems having them sitting in the fridge or the freezer. No. Pretty much, pretty much the only um, drinks you can't pre-mix are the ones that have got a sparkling component. So if, you, if you've got a, um, a, uh, an Aperol spritz, which has got uh, soda and Prosecco, which is you need the bubbles. You can't okay. pre-batch them because you'll lose that effervescence. Um, that makes but sense. I, I can't think of, of anything. That's the only thing that you can't pre-batch. I can't think of any cocktail that doesn't work pre-batching in the fridge or even freezing. Um, they last fantastically well. We've had someone asking for a mojito. Any tips for a mojito? Yes, yes, I do. And uh, I do have a tip. So let me get my rum. That was quick. So I've got a great tip for a mojito and it involves, it involves muddling. Now, uh, I'm not sure if anyone's got a muddler, but Muddling is, is a great way of releasing flavours. So for a mojito, I'll tell you a fantastic trick. You get a lime. One lime is roughly sort of 30 mils. So I'll cut that up into quarters. I'm going to put it into my uh, glass. I'm going to put some mint in there. And I'm going to get a tablespoon, a flat tablespoon of sugar. Okay, and I'm going to put that in there as well. Then I'm going to put my 45 mils of, of rum in there. 30, 15. And then I'm going to give it a good muddle. Now, the beauty of doing this is with the raw sugar is the raw sugar acts like a sandpaper. And so it starts to sort of grate on the, the, um, the, the skin of the lime. And it starts to rub off just a little bit of that super fine zest of the lime skin. 
you can get the same effect by just getting a, um, a zester and zesting a lime over your cocktail and getting a, a few shavings of the of the um, of the grated zest. But like I said, in a muddler, that sugar is grating against the, the skin of the lime and getting it a real bit of zest. zest. And I know this because I've made them both ways, side by side, and drank them, and you can really taste the difference. The one with the the one with the the, the zest from the raw sugar, sugar, it's just got that extra zing on it and it's delicious. So now, in with the ice. Into my shaker. Into your... Just tip the whole lot into uh, some sort of tall glass. And you can add a little bit of soda if you like. Um, not really necessary, but if you like them, if you like just a, a little bit, just say a splash of soda water or mineral water, give that a stir around. You can strain that if you want. If you don't like the, if you don't like the green bits in your um in your glass, like I said before, I love seeing the mint. I love seeing the lime. I love seeing that that really vibrant colour. If you zested the lime instead, you'd add sugar syrup? Yeah, so if you were using sugar syrup and you wanted a bit of that zing, I haven't got it here, but you just get your zester, your fine zester, mm. and zest a little bit of the outside off the skin of the lime and you get the same effect. But it really does make a, a big difference. It's just so vibrant and zesty and beautiful. And, and if you ever go to Mexico, that's uh, uh, or Cuba or, or wherever, um, Cuba, wouldn't it? Where's the home of the mojito? Cuba? Um, well, it's, it's white rum, so it probably wouldn't be Mexico. Um, yeah, my white, my, my white spirit's confused. But if you go to Cuba, um, that's how they're going to make their, their mojitos for you. They're going to muddle it on the spot to get that same effect where they're, they're grating, they're, they're rubbing uh, the sugar on the lime to get that zest. And it really does make a difference. It's beautiful. Somebody's asked whether you can add passion fruit pulp to that. Yes, you can. We just added a we just added a, a passion fruit mojito onto our rest, onto our beverage, uh, cocktail list at the Commons. What we found though is that you've got to be just a little bit careful with your passion fruit pulp, no more than ten mils, because it starts to, you know, the, the, the beauty of a mojito is you've got the the rum, the lime, uh, and the mint. And once you, you add the passion fruit in there, you start sort of affecting those flavours. And too much of the, because passion fruit's got a beautiful flavour, but it's quite a strong, tart uh, and intense flavour. So we did quite a few trials and we found that sort of less is more on the passion fruit pump, uh, on the passion fruit pulp side. So I've just put 10 mils in there. And because you don't want to, you don't want to lose all the good things about the mojito that mint and the lime and the rum. You don't want to overpower it, you just want to add to it. So one, one question is for a non-alcoholic mojito. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, if you just left the rum out, it wouldn't be a mojito. No, you can get the lime and the mint and the, uh, and the soda. Um, I think some of those non-alcoholic spirits could work pretty well. I know, I think seed lip is my favourite. There's another, but it's not, it's more of a gin kind of um, flavour, but as far as a, a non-alcoholic rum spirit, there are some, there are some good ones out there. Um, I think Lyre, L-Y-R-E, they make a decent version. Um, and you could, you could give that a try. I haven't, I do, I do. Non-alcoholic spirits. There you go. That's that's a, a good tip. Yeah, yeah. So there's a there's one company called Seedlip who kind of started the, the whole non-alcoholic uh, revolution. And the guy actually came out to Australia and he and he came and came in one day and he brought me this 400 year old book. It was a tiny little apocryphal um, book, about an inch thick, with all this ancient. You know, he made me put on white gloves before I touched it, and it was all these ancient, you know, herbal law apocryphal recipes and and he, he's developed these spirits where he, 
uh, infuses gins, uh, infuses botanicals and herbs and, and spices and makes these beautiful uh, non-alcoholic spirits. And they, they're fantastic. And, you know, they cost as much as a bottle of gin. So they're, oh. they're not cheap, but, they, um, but they're really good quality. So that company is called Seed Lip. Um, spell, I think spell that? Seed Lip. So S-E-E-D and then L-I-P. Seed Lip. Okay. Non-alcoholic yeah. spirits. And yeah. just one more, one more question. What passion fruit pulp have you been using? Okay, so I've got one that I get um, from one of our suppliers at work. You know, it's called uh, it's called Sunnyside um, Passion Fruit Pulp. Um, I, I imagine if you Googled unsweetened passion fruit pulp, you might find some out there, but it's definitely worth trying to um, find, seek out the unsweetened one. Um, I mean, obviously a fresh passion fruit when they're in season, use one of those, but you should be able to jump online and maybe find some frozen frozen unsweetened passion fruit pulp i know um um what's the um what's the uh food retailer down in balaclava that does a lot of jewish food and, and kosher food in williams road next to the behind the railway line can't remember the name of that company i know they used to have um unsweetened passion fruit pulp in their freezer anybody um, rishon somebody said rishon. yeah rishon foods there you go um, I know they used to uh, have some unsweetened passion fruit pulp, little bottles of it in their freezer, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. But, um, okay. Well, that's good to, good to know for everybody to, or like you said, when they're in season, what about using something like pomegranates or um, uh, a different fruit that maybe has a similar idea to it? Yeah. I, I tell you a fantastic, it's a fantastic. Uh, Lychees? Lychees are great. I love lychees. Um, we make a great cocktail with lychees and coconut and some shochu, which is a Japanese barley spirit, Delicious. and some lime, which is fantastic. Um, one thing I've been doing lately is infusing strawberries and pineapple in, in spirits. So um, I've been getting pear brandy or, um, or cachaca, but lately pear brandy, and I've been getting pineapple and strawberry chopping them up and then just chucking it into the into the pear brandy and leaving that for a couple of days, mm. maybe some orange slices as well. Uh, and then I make two cocktails out of that. So I'll, I'll, I'll put the fruit to the side and then I'll get that pear brandy and I make a beautiful cocktail with some, uh, I'll actually make a sangria. So I'll get that pear brandy and a bit of lemon and orange juice and some, some agave nectar and then a bottle of rosé and it bake, makes just a fantastic sangria. But then I've got all this leftover um, pineapple and strawberry chunks that have been soaking in booze and you don't want to you don't want to waste them and I've just you know try I've, I've been blitzing them up in the Nutribullet with some Pisco um, to make a, a, a strawberry and pineapple sort of Pisco sour and it's just fantastic really great really um, really Matt great. I think we're starting to see some people heading off so I think on that note we might Thank everyone for coming. Um, I'm getting some wonderful comments from people about how amazing it is, how everyone wants to go out and drink cocktails, the yeah. sweet two one, the Negronis. Uh, apparently you are awesome. Um, <laughs> thanks, Elle. And, uh, and everybody, look, everybody was just wonderful. Thank you so much, Matt. So there's some great delightful thank yous, some great comments, blah, blah. They, they keep on coming. Mostly from people I know that are drinkers. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, thanks, Elle. Um, all, my, all my nephews and stepsons out there who, who apparently like a little bit of a drink. Matt, thank you so much. This has been absolutely fantastic. We will forward the recipes to everyone as soon as the office can get them onto an email. If you haven't registered, let me know and I can organise for everyone to get it or just um, message me or send something to the office at National Council and we'll make sure that you get the recipes. Matt, thank you so much. Thanks it's been for fabulous. Me. I want to get out and start mixing now. Appreciate it. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks a lot. Thank you all. Bye, everyone.